Before we move on to publishing our app, make sure that you remove all of the print lines throughout. So for example, in main where we're printing these lines about timestamps, we don't need that anymore. We don't want to display that in production and the same with the lines that we have within home. So if you do a global search for it, it should be pretty evident what needs to be removed. And once all that's done, we'll save and we're going to begin with deploying our app, publishing our app for Android users on the Google Play Store. I'm going to be using the following guide available at flutter.dev slash docs slash deployment slash Android. When we move on to iOS deployment, you can just change the end of the path to iOS. So the first step in releasing our app is adding a launcher icon. I'm going to go with the default Flutter icon that comes with every Flutter project, but you can provide a custom one if you use the Flutter launcher icons package and go through the following steps. The next step is to sign our app. We need a way of telling the Google Play Store or saying just in general that this app is ours and no one else's. So that's the reason behind needing to sign it or create a unique digital signature for it. So the process for signing our app is creating a key store. And to create that, we just need to copy the following command and then within our terminal, run it by pasting it in. And we're gonna be asked first for a key store password. This needs to be at least six characters, and then we'll need to re-enter it. And after that, we'll need to provide some personal information like our first and last name, as well as a related organization if we have one. Then after we've filled out all of that, we're gonna get a review of it, and we're gonna be asked if it's correct. If that's the case, we can type in yes. Then we're gonna be asked for a store password and we can just hit the return or enter button if we want to use the same value as our key store password. So as a result, once the CLI process is done, we're going to have a key.jks file that's within users slash and then our username for our computer. And if you highlight this line and hit command and click on it, you should be taken to that file. Regardless, we need to remember this path and that will be for the sake of our next step. We need to reference the key store from the app. So we need to reference this key.js file and its contents by creating a key.properties file within our Android folder. So we'll head to within our explorer in the Android folder, we're going to create a key.properties file. Now this is going to contain some secure data such as our password, the passwords that we just provided. So if you're using version control, you'll need to add that to your gitignore file. That is if you're using git, and you'll need to provide an entry just like this of key.properties. So once that's been added, we'll head back to the file itself. And we're going to need to store these key value pairs that you see right here. So we can copy this snippet and paste it in. We need to provide our store password, our key password, as well as the location of the key store file, that key.jks file. And so this is where the path comes into place that we were given. And it needs to be the absolute path that will likely be users slash your username slash key.jks. Once you've provided that, as well as your passwords, we can save and then we need to configure the signing in Gradle. So in the folder Android, once again, within app, we'll open up this build.gradle file. We're going to need to read from our new key.properties file. And we can do that by finding first the Android, this Android value and the opening curly brace for it or underneath it should say compile SDK version. And it says to replace this with the following code snippet, which we'll copy and paste in. So this is basically reading from key.properties. And we're also gonna need to find this build types area. So we'll search for that. We need to replace all of this with the signing configuration info. So we'll copy that and paste that in. That'll do basically the same thing. Then we can enable ProGuard, which is intended to 
reduce the size of our built project of our APK, but we don't need to do this. We don't need to minify our project. So we'll move on to the next step, which is reviewing the app manifest. So this means the Android manifest.xml file that's located within Android app source main. Okay, so let's go to Android app source main and find Android manifest.xml and we want to review the values within it. First of all, we want to check this Android label property. We want that to be set to our application name. So it's currently Fluttershare, so we'll leave it at that. That's what I'll be using. And we also need this line. You'll need to include this within your Android manifest, this uses permission tag. It's a single tag where we set Android colon name to Android permission dot internet, exactly like you see here. And the reason for this is in development, we're given access to the internet. We didn't need to include this configuration. However, for production, we do need to include this tag in the event that we need inter internet access for our app to run properly. And of course, we do with all of the requests that we make in our app. Then we need to review the build configuration and largely we're going to leave it at the values that it currently has. So that's available in Android app and we've already visited this build Gradle file. So Andro Android app build Gradle and we want to review the default config here. We want to make sure first of all that our application ID is unique. Don't leave it at com.example whatever, make sure that this is an actual unique value, say with this domain value being linked to your domain name if you have a website or your company name. And we could also target things like the minimum SDK version or the target SDK version for our app, or we could also give our app a given version code or version name, but I'm gonna leave it at these default values. You generally don't need to change that. And then to build our app for release, all we need to do is save all these files and our approach to building it is going to be the APK route. So we have the app bundle route or the APK route. And to create what's known as an APK, we can just run the command flutter build APK. And if this isn't going to run correctly if you don't have your key properties values provided. So make sure you have your store password key password and the correct path for a store file. And once that's done, we can run this command. And when that's done, we should have our built project created within our build folder in build. And we can head into app, then outputs, APK. And what we'll use to upload to the Google Play Store is this app.apk file. So now let's go through working with the Google Play Store. You can search for the URL to go to by Googling Google Play Store console. So you'll want to go there. And it's important to note that to be able to upload a given application to the Google Play Store, you're going to need to pay a one-time fee of $25. So once that's paid, the process of creating your application and uploading your files will be as follows. So you'll first be within your Google Play console and you'll select create application. From there, you'll need to choose your default language with a select as well as your app title. And once that's done, you'll hit create. And then you'll be taken to a products details page where your title is going to be supplied automatically that you put in. And then you can provide a short description and full description of the app that you're creating. So for a short description, you might say it's a social network. For your full description, you might list out all the features or your desired users. And then underneath, you'll scroll down and you'll have this product details area where you can add some graphic assets, namely some screenshots of your application in use. And so for the phone option, you can select browse files and you'll need to select at least two screenshots. You can provide different versions for the different devices that users will have, say a tablet or Android TV, etc. And when you're done with the changes that you've made, you can hit save draft, which should be in the bottom right hand corner. And from there, you'll go to the app releases tab here on the left hand side. So then within app releases, you'll want to select in this production track area, manage for production. 
So this allows us to add our Android app bundle or APK to production to make our app available to all users on the Google Play Store. And then in the next page that we're taken to, you want to create a release. So this allows us to prepare, review, and then publish the version of the app that we want to make available. So we'll select Create Release. And after that, we can, in this area here, select Browse Files and drop in our APK that's within our Build folder. And that's it. All that we have to do after that is if we want, add a release name and add some additional details. And at this point, we'll be able to review our application and after this, share it to all the users on the Google Play Store.